Hey everybody, welcome to the Torah Matinee Shear. You know, I I haven't done one of these in a while, and uh, mostly it's because I just don't upload them anymore. <laughs> I just record um, now for uh, to record my thoughts. Um, I'm way offline, and uh, so I just don't upload, um, and uh, I don't give Shiram anymore because there's just simply nobody to give Shiram uh, for, and I disguise my words. Um, you know, I still learn. I'm learning uh, Perky Avot and uh, Parsha, uh, some Musar stuff, and uh, and I disguise my words. Um, I don't speak uh, in the name of Chazal. Um, I speak in the name of uh, my tradition, and I call my tradition um, Leibowitzer, <laughs> uh, from a book called uh, The Canticles of Leibowitz, uh, where there was uh, one last surviving Jew after a technological holocaust, and uh, this one Jew uh, carried the Mesora and uh, was waiting for Mashiach, <laughs> and uh, so that's... There's a lot of uh, similarities there. We're here on the South Coast. I'm the only Jew, um, and certainly the only uh, religious one. And you know, and I'm waiting for Mashiach. What the heck? And uh, so I went to town, and um, and the thing that uh, prompted this is um, is the idea of home. Um, I've had a lot of homes, uh, you know, and for me a home is uh, my Jewish communities. Um, uh, in San Diego, um, I began the process of converting uh, to Judaism just so long ago, and, uh, and then I moved to uh, Detroit where I was immersed in a, in a very strong uh, Orthodox community, and then uh, moved to Monterey, um, to marry an Orthodox girl, and um, and in the process ended up down here on the south coast of Big Sur, where I take all that learning and all of the experiences of my life, and you know, and I apply it to uh, to right where I'm sitting. And the place where I'm sitting right now is my home. Uh, when I was in town, um, I wasn't home. And it was the first time I ever felt that way, that, uh, that Monterey was no longer my home. Um, I felt uh, idle there. I felt, um, I, I didn't feel hopeful, um, didn't have much to work on, and uh, I just wanted to get back here. I just wanted to get back to, uh, to Plaskett. And why? Well, because here, my my spirit um, is free to uh, to live as a Jew, you know, um, to just have the thoughts that I have. Um, sitting here on my bucket, I uh, the thoughts I have are my own. Sitting in town, my thoughts are of n not of not of immediate concerns. And, uh, and so I just feel so much more comfortable right now, uh, you know, in my little world. And so it is, um, and so it is. So it was Pesach time and, uh, I was up here in the mountains. And so, uh, our tradition is that we have a Seder. Uh, we have, uh, you know, we break the middle matzah. For the Afikoman, we drink our four cups, um, we do Magid. So I was able to do that, and, uh, and that was a beautiful, uh, wonderful thing. Um, when I went to town, I was just very, very lucky. I came in on a Friday, and, uh, and the rabbi brought his family um, to the synagogue. And uh, I got to hear, hear the laning. You know, I haven't heard laning. I haven't heard a, I have I don't know that I've heard Kaddish in like a year. <laughs> and uh and that was very very moving, uh, very very wonderful. And uh the the reason why I know that um Judaism is very very important to me is um 
when I got to the synagogue, um, I kissed the mezuzah with my lips. And I do that. But um, I felt an urgency to go uh, to visit the Sefer Torahs. And so, uh, so I'm, I'm hustling over to the Aaron. And uh, before I even get my hands on the parochet, I'm, uh, you know, I'm in tears. I get the, uh, you know, I get the Aaron open. Um, I embrace the Sefer Torahs and just begin sobbing tears of joy and sadness and longing and and sadness for, uh, you know, the loss of, uh, you know, the base of Mikdash. <laughs> and I, you know, and, and I just prayed as I always do that, you know, may Mashiach come but it was a good Shabbos and it was a nice Shabbos and uh, you know and I enjoyed the Mishpacha there was a lot of good food um, I've got some new uh, new Samira I'd love to sing you one of my songs you know there's so many things I would like to do for you I would like to show you I would like to talk to you about and and help you with and But I, my life is spent, you know, alone. Today's a climbing day. Pretty happy about that. I got the day off. Um, and it's not Shabbos, right? I have a day off that isn't Shabbos. So uh, I'm going to go down to the beach. Um, I've got a thing I call the thumb down there. It's uh, right in the middle of Jade Cove. Uh, it's the pinnacle of this really ancient hard rock. And... Uh, you know, it's all chipped up and, you know, burned by countless campfires. Uh, I've been wanting to climb that for a very long time. So I get to go wander around on the beach today and uh, and think holy thoughts, you know. It's the best, uh, the best of the best. I wanted to talk about uh, my ride that I got um, down. I... Uh, I take the bus to Nepenthe, and then I've got about another 35 miles or so to go to get that down to Gorda Town, where, uh, near, near where I live. And so um, I was hitchhiking at Nepenthe, and uh, I'm wearing some town pants. Um, I don't know if you can see, but they're like striped, <coughs> striped, striped skinny jeans, because yeah, town clothes. I also got this fleece. Um, I've had my eyes on this fleece at the thrift store whoa, for uh, just a very long time. And uh, I couldn't believe it was still there. It's a really nice fleece. It's vintage. And uh, wow, really happy about it. Um, right, so I've got our new clothes. I, I brought home my Shabbos shirt because I don't know, I needed a shirt. So, uh... So I'm looking pretty good. I got these new uh, Birkenstocks um, with my stimulus check. And uh, and I went all out, pretty much at the border of opulence, uh, pretty much at the border of excess. Um, I got uh, three pairs of these, uh, these Pendleton wool socks. Um, when she rung me up, she's like, that'll be $78. <laughs> Three pairs of socks. I was like, what? But, uh, you know, it's free money, and uh, I, I really need to take care of my feet. And so, yeah, Pendleton wool socks, yo. I'm going to wash them in the creek today with Dr. Bronner peppermint soap. Because that's, you know, so it is. All right, so this is the Torah matinee shir. Have we been talking about Torah? Well, I learned a really bitchin' um, Perkei Avot. It said all of Klal Yisroel. Kol Yisroel. Um, have Helech Olam Haba. Right, that they... They they all have a, a share in the world to come. Every Jew has a share in the world to come. That was the Perkiyavah. And so, 
uh, the commentary went something like, why bring this, you know? There's so many deeper, uh, loftier thoughts, uh, you know, and they will come later. But if you tell the Jews right off the bat, your ending's going to be good. It just could be better. Well, you know, so that's good advice then, right? That if our life, if, if our, the quality of our life after life is based on how we live this life, well, it behooves a person then to live in the very best way. And what is the best way? Well, that's the thorny problem. That is a very thorny problem. Everybody has a different best way. For instance, I started smoking when I was like 14. And I've smoked my whole life. And uh, one of the things I say, but it's so sad, is that I could always tell when I was getting to the end of one of my marriages because I'd rather have a cigarette than a kiss. <laughs> I tell another joke that's really sad, you know. I've never had a job that I wasn't fired from. But if it wasn't for me being me, I wouldn't be here. And if I wasn't here, I wouldn't have the opportunities for Kiddush Hashem that I do. And so I live my life. So let me tell you about this guy, Adam. Um, so I got a ride down uh, in a white van. Guy pulls over. He says, I like the striped pants. Well, I had just gotten the striped pants and I put them on. And they were the only ones that fit. I, I kind of like didn't want them. But they were uh, the ones that fit. And, you know, they're, they're good pants. And so I was wearing striped pants. That's what made the guy pull over. Okay. So I get in the van, and it turns out uh, he's a 40-year Big Sur guy. He's been 20 years down at Pfeiffer. Um, he makes goat cheese <laughs> from his own goat milk. Um, grows his food. Uh, makes a living uh, as a caretaker 20 years at Pfeiffer. So this guy said so many things to me that blew my mind and my mind's not easily blown um and so i'm filled with proper net proper intention right now um that i'm living as i am to live and that's the message i saw um in this week's Torah portion, um, I thank God I had uh, the ability to uh, have an aliyah. And during my aliyah, it said, uh, it said uh, something like, Nevela Vatrefa Lo uh, um, Eat. I don't know. Ach, ach, ach. Whatever the word is. But it said that um, food that, uh, you know, hasn't been properly uh, slaughtered, meat that hasn't been properly slaughtered, or uh, meat that comes from uh, a living animal, um, are not to be eaten. So in this statement, there is no room for uh, interpretation. It's a, it's a straight up statement. The Torah has a lot of those. Um, like it says, you shall not eat pig. <laughs> There's no variation available. And so, as a person who calls themselves an Orthodox Jew, what that means is, um, every word in the Torah is true. And applies to me. So, God forbid, if I were to eat pork, um, and I just don't, um, but if I did, it wouldn't be my religion's fault. Uh, it wouldn't be um, God's fault. Uh, it would be something I did. It would be my own. Um, a closer example 
would be uh, smoking on the Sabbath. Um, if I were to smoke on the Sabbath, I wouldn't tell myself it's okay. I would tell myself I'm sinning and I'm going to pay a price. And I'm losing something right now. And so, sometimes the price becomes too steep. And sometimes you just don't got nothing left to lose. Um, yeah, so I saw that in the Torah portion, right? Another way, another way uh, they expressed that was um, they talked about uh, the, the duties of the Kohen, right? That... Uh, the priest in the temple uh, had certain tasks, and only he could do them. And and an ordinary Jew who isn't a priest simply cannot. It's not you don't graduate to the priesthood. You you're not promoted into it. It's uh, you you don't get to do it ever. So just get over it. Like um, our station in life. And the tasks that we're presented with are the are our station in life and our tasks. Um, we can't compare our life to somebody else, um, and we have to do the best we can in the moment that we are in. Well, I'm at the place we call downstairs, and uh, you know, I, I'm, I saw there was wood to chop. And so I got to cut um, oak rounds today, which is such an incredibly gratifying job, I've learned, um, because it requires you to hit it with all of your might with a gigantic axe. You have to swing a gigantic axe as hard as you can, or else it bounces off. So I, that's a new analogy of mine, right? I used to say, oh yeah, you know, when you're skating a pool, and you're going to drop in, you have to be 100% committed or else you're going to hurt yourself. Well, same thing with split and oak. <laughs> so what's the point? The point is that life is good, no matter where you are. No matter what situation you're in, it's exactly what you need to have happening. So just pay attention. Um, do the right thing and you'll pass through it, you know. If you don't pay attention and you just don't do the right thing, that thing's going to pop up for you forever. So if you want to clear off your, uh, you know, uh, task list, then get her done. All right, so enough of that. So I uh, hope everything's going well with you, that you had a nice uh, kosher Pesach, uh, Sphere to Omer, I'm, uh, I got to shave and get a haircut, uh, you know, like the Omer time, uh, Likvod Shabbos, so uh, I'm sitting pretty, you know, got some new work boots, um, gave Joel my gloves, just because I love him, so life is good, and uh, just don't forget that, you know. And if you don't feel like life is good, well, you got to think about that. I mean, there's no reason, um, there's no reason to just not feel good about yourself. A uh, little bit of work, a um, little bit of prayer, a little bit of trust goes a long ways. And, uh, and so uh, may, may Hashem bless you that... Uh, that you find your way and, uh, and that contentment and joy and peace are, uh, become the ordinary thing for you and that uh, your life be filled with all of the wonder and goodness of, uh, of proper intentions and uh, actions well spent. Okay? Kol um, Kavod and uh, only good things for all of us. Next year in Jerusalem. Alrighty then, bye bye.